human cell is nothing different but animal cell animal cell right exactly exactly okay since we are talking about like a uh, cellular respiration particularly in humans here it's the same process that uh, goes on other animals also nothing to be confused about i have just taken an example of a human cell of muscle okay so a cell will also be having a boundary okay so it will be called a cell membrane right now so out of all the organs that floats in the cytoplasm of the cell one of the uh, one of the most important cell organelle is called as mitochondria mitochondria so it is actually the mitochondria where the process of respiration takes place hence this mitochondria has also been called as powerhouse of the cell powerhouse of cell because it is in the mitochondria where the process of respiration takes place here you can see this is a cell it could be of human it could be of other animals also and these are the mitochondria where the process of respiration is taking place and from the number of molecules that is being released you can say whether it's aerobic or anaerobic is it aerobic or anaerobic guys yeah anaerobic it's a aerobic so, respiration here yes so can you once more explain about aerobic and aero anaerobic yeah, uh, respiration sure 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 look here look what happens in the case of aerobic respiration respiration is of two types one of the type is the respiration basically the breakdown of food that takes place in presence of oxygen presence of o2 so that we call as aerobic aerobic respiration and in <coughs> in many bacteria in many microorganisms and in sometimes human cells also or animal cells also there can be breakdown of food in the absence of oxygen yeah chakrika are you there yes sir so there you call it as anaerobic anaerobic respiration anaerobic respiration okay, okay now look sir. in the case of aerobic respiration what happens the complete breakdown of food is taking place so you have got glucose glucose the oxidation of glucose takes place okay so what is released what is released carbon dioxide is released water is released and energy is released right now 36 atp molecules of energy are released in the case of aerobic respiration is that clear <laughs> yeah is that yes. clear okay now if you were to talk about the anaerobic respiration if you were to take microorganisms for example yeast in the case of yeast what happens they can do the process of respiration <coughs> that is breakdown of food in the absence of oxygen also hmm apart from yeast humans also undergo anaerobic respiration okay so in the case of yeast what happens the glucose is broken down into absence of oxygen here absence of o2 into alcohol into alcohol and what energy along with carbon dioxide also all right so that is the example of anaerobic respiration and and it is alcohol energy and carbon dioxide right yeah along with alcohol okay. and energy it releases carbon dioxide also okay sir right now. energy is 5 atp no energy is 5 atp here yeah, very good getting it now no <clears throat> what oh, if the like the like uh, <laughs> yes like the what is the like the cell okay okay full form of atp first let me clear that out it is adenosine triphosphate adenosine tri phosphate that is the name of the molecule okay adenosine a d e n o s i n e adenosine triphosphate okay what was the other question 
like you said in the cell that it is is there a limit of mitochondria or no usually it uh, ranges from 4 to 5 mitochondria okay it might be more in some cells it might be lesser in some cells especially for example if you were to take the cells of uh, hair or the bones there is a possibility that lesser mitochondria can be found there while the those tissues those cells which are uh, more involved in exercises right now which are uh, doing more uh, metabolic work and work of running and doing physical activity for example especially the muscle cells there uh, you will see that more mitochondria are present getting it now since that cells requires more amount of energy right now okay and uh, yes why is vaiga here or not no not yet just let me check if she is in the waiting no all right now in the case of humans what happens many times when we are doing some physical activity that requires much more amount of energy so muscular cramp develops why the muscular cramp develops chakrika because anaerobic respiration has taken place in that particular region in that particular area of the body where muscular cramps have developed so what basically happened glucose was broken down in the absence of oxygen right now why because the body is not getting sufficient oxygen many times people develop breathlessness no conditions of breathlessness or the oxygen might not have reached that portion of the body properly so in that case lactic acid is generated along with energy getting it now so here you can see that the time when the person develops muscular cramp anaerobic respiration has occurred there and lactic acid has developed there not carbon dioxide carbon dioxide and water will only be released when the person massages that area or takes a hot bath or applies hot water then lactic acid got converted into co2 and water is the difference clear so so uh, what all are produced in uh, anaerobic respiration are alcohol energy mm. and lactic acid exactly these are produced okay. but in separate organism in lack um, in the case of yeast alcohol energy and carbon dioxide is produced while in the case of humans lactic acid is first produced and then energy is given off okay now to pour, now to get re relief from that muscular cramps we take a hot bath or we massage that area so then what happens this lactic acid gets converted into carbon dioxide and water so now the person feels a relief getting it now is that clear yes sir yes? it is clear okay also i told you guys about a term anaerobes a n e r o b e s what is this term it's actually a n e a n e e who like it uh, do is anaerobic respiration or called organisms that can do anaerobic respirations are called as anaerobes okay so remember that right now okay now can you guys now tell me why like the yeast are being used to produce wine and beer <laughs> why yeast are being used to in the production of alcohol in the production of alcohol why yeast are being used because they do they do the anaerobic respiration they convert the food into alcohol that's why in the wine and beer industry they are used hearing it now is that clear yes, sir. yes okay. sir now there is a question here like why do we feel hungry after doing a physical activity like walking or running yes why is it so because we consume a lot of meat because we consume a lot of meat because we consume a lot of energy okay look whenever we do a physical activity the food that is present in our body major portion of that food is converted into energy because in the physical activity much more amount of energy is required so since all the food is get consumed in generating the energy we start to feel hungry hence in order to get 
gain more energy we need to eat more food that is the reason okay now here is a diagram which uh, we didn't saw earlier like you, here you can see the rib cages and the lungs and here you can also see how bronchiole is further branched into alveoli right now okay so i can't see where it bronchi yes where is like the bronchi yeah okay let me show the structures here this here is trachea all right and when the uh, uh, when this trachea for the when just when ju it just enters into the lungs this portion here look at this here this portion here this here here it is called as bronchioles then to make it simple it's like this here okay so this is here trachea okay this is trachea here and this here these two here are bronchioles getting it now bronchioles is in two legs right now yes there are two bronchioles okay trachea further divides up into two pipes each pipe enters the two lungs okay each pipe um, enters the separate lungs at that time bronchia it's simply the names okay nothing too uh, complex about them getting it now now there was one more question which we discussed in the previous slide like why do we sneeze yes look as we inhale the air which is present in the surrounding sometimes what happens it might contain some unwanted substances also that might lead to some um, um, uh, irritation in the nasal passage right so whenever dust particles or some insects or some other unwanted particle enters the nasal passage it triggers the inner lining of the nasal passage okay so in that manner in that uh, that is the reason why we sneeze getting it now yes sir okay all yes, right sir. now we are going to talk about the respiration in different organisms okay before that let's talk about breathing in different organisms breathing in other organisms so far we have been talking about humans only now okay so you will be having example of different organisms for example you have cockroaches okay you have examples of amphibian that is frog here then you have aquatic animals for example fish okay then you have also example of like aquatic plants how do they breathe okay plants also breathe right now plants also do breathing and plants also do the process of respiration you guys know this right now so these are the organisms we will be talking about in today's class and then later on we will also talk about how respiration takes place in the plants okay by the way you guys tell me is respiration a 24 hour process in the plants or photosynthesis is the 24 hour process hmm? so i think respir respiration is a 24 hour process exactly respiration is the 24 hour process and photo photosynthesis is only in the day only in the day time in the presence of sunlight yes sir hmm. <clears throat> okay okay so we will discuss that when we come to the topic in detail so let's talk about this cockroach here <clears throat> so what do you see in this cockroach that is the structure of a cockroach <clears throat> here you see the body of the cockroach like in your schools uh, like uh, the biology teacher have they were like uh, um, depicted you the body diagram of a cockroach or have they actually showed you the cockroach in the lab in the lab no sir uh, My guess no. Start the respiration yeah, and then the sensation. Okay, okay. So it's only limited up to your textbooks only. Anyways, so look, many insects like cockroaches have small openings in their body. That is called as spiracles. What I said, many 
insects apart from cockroaches also have small openings in their body called spiracles now if you were to look the diagram here now look the diagram here closely hmm. that is actually a diagram of a cockroach and the respiratory system of the cockroach has been showed in there okay so they have small openings in their body this is the opening this is also an opening this is a opening all these are basically you can understand it like hollow structures in their body it's like holes the spiracles okay, are nothing but it's like holes yeah it look like a small bulb yeah it looks like that okay but it's a sideways diagram okay so you see they have got uh, small openings on the side of their bo bodies if the cockroaches if you were to see it like this say this is a cockroach here right now so on the both sides of the body they will be having small openings that will be called as spiracles <clears throat> getting it now now apart from spiracles they have also got air tube like structures if you were to look one more structure here they have got air tube like structures called as tracheal tubes hmm? they we are talking about cockroach here okay they also have ear tube like structures called tracheal tubes just like you have got the wind pipe just like we humans have got wind pipe they also have got a wind pipe like structure running in their body that is called as tracheal tubes getting it now so the exchange of the gases in humans were taking place in the alveoli inside the lungs while in the case of this cockroach the exchange of gases takes place in this tracheal tubes getting it now what i'm trying to say the tracheal yes. tube is a type of lung tube exactly just like we have got lungs to breathe they have got this trachea tracheas okay and here what is happening the air that this um cockroach inhales via the spiracles they will be storing that air inside the air sacs so like they have got the air bags in their body in which they can store up the airs so for example if someone like um if the cockroach falls in the water so you will say so what will happen now at that time these holes these spiracles will fill up with the water so the spiracle will die no it already stored some air in the air sacs so that it can survive getting it now so air enters the body of this cockroach via the spiracles look at where i'm pointing it gets stored it gets stored in the air sacs right now and if you guys were to remember earlier i told you in the previous class like how exchange of gases takes place between the alveoli <clears throat> uh, into the uh, alveoli alveoli is where rich with blood capillaries if you remember in the case of humans let's say this is alveoli right a popcorn like head it's having a popcorn like head and it is rich with blood capillaries okay and if the blood capillaries is is having suppose just for example only two molecules of oxygen and the air that the lungs has just inhaled it is having let's say <clears throat> five molecules of oxygen so there is a pressure difference so from the surrounding air will uh, oxygen will be entering into the blood capillary in the same manner in the same manner exchange of gases takes place in the body of trachea also and where does the exchange of gases takes place guys can you tell me in the case of cockroach trachea yes. tubes Yeah. Track tracheal tubes exactly. That's where the exchange of gases takes place. So air enters. Like, uh, hmm. You told in air sacs they will take it. Then how will they take it? Like directly they will take it. Yeah, they will directly take it. Uh, take in air, no? Why this spiracles? 
okay <coughs> getting in what i'm trying to say here air enters the body via the spiracles okay and then gaseous exchange sundos will you please repeat the question i thought the your question i didn't answer that will you please repeat the question i said like the air is accelerated directly from gay like whenever like wherever they are they will, they will just take it yeah whenever they require they will be taking air it's like 24 hour process for them also right now wherever uh, hmm. yes in wherever they are in wherever they they are yes wherever they are oxygen. if there is no oxygen uh, if there is no oxygen like whatever little amount of air is stored in the air sacs if that is exhausted if that is used up the by, uh, by the cockroach after a while they will die if someone notoriously covers a cockroach by some uh, object here okay by a can here for example then after a few, after some a few minutes the cockroach might die okay so gaseous exchange in cockroach takes place in the tracheal tube so we can call it as trachea simply in the trachea right and whatever and here from the trachea what will happen it will be taking in oxygen right now it will be taking in oxygen and the cells of the cockroach that does the process of respiration they will be releasing which gas nitrogen or carbon dioxide or ammonia which gas will be released chakrika and yes. sundos chakrika and sundos why the trachea this cockroach will be taking in oxygen why the process of diffusion yes sir in the trachea with the help of diffusion chakrika by the way please define what is a diffusion <laughs> uh, so diffusion is when um, an organism takes in the oxygen and then the oxygen gets mixed with the blood capillaries or like for suppose in the cockroaches no. it's like that is one of the example of case of diffusion diffusion is simply movement of air molecules okay or water uh, air molecules from a region of high pressure to a region of low pressure that would be the definition and what you just uh, said it's an example of diffusion getting it okay. now yes sir okay okay all right now sundus when the oxygen will uh, enter into the trachea via the process of diffusion it will reach to the cells of the cockroach and in the cells of the cockroach the process of respiration will take place so in the respiration which gas is released carbon dioxide nitrogen ammonia which one carbon dioxide carbon dioxide will be released okay and this carbon dioxide will be exchanged where it will be exchanged at the air sacs spiracles or trachea Like it will be no, it will be exchanged at the spiracles. Like if you were to see the example of uh, humans, hmm? what happens? Humans are taking in air. Right now, humans are taking in air, and in the lungs, what happens? Oxygen is separated out from the air, and it goes to the cells, each and every cells, and the cells produces carbon dioxide. right now and the blood carries that carbon dioxide in them back to the lungs and then this lungs will do what it will it will release back that carbon dioxide via our nostril to the air to the atmosphere so same thing should be happening in the case of cockroach also is this clear or not what i just explained is this clear in context of human yes sir so same thing happens in the yeah uh in diffusion you said the air mole uh, like you said air molecules move right so it's like mm. they move from high pressure to low pressure or from mm. uh, low pressure to high pressure from high pressure to low pressure 
ओके सर ओके एज आई गिव यू द एग्जांपल ऑफ द इंसेंस स्टिक सो द इंसेंस स्टिक वेयर इट इज बोर्न ओके सो द गैसेस मॉलिक्यूल्स कमिंग आउट ऑफ द इंसेंस स्टिक हियर हियर इट इज मोर वाइल इफ यू आर सिटिंग इन दिस कॉर्नर ऑफ द रूम ओके हियर इट इज लेसर सो इट विल रीच फ्रॉम दिस रीजन ऑफ हायर प्रेशर टू दिस रीजन ऑफ लोअर प्रेशर गेटिंग इट नाउ yes okay sir. now continuing further as i said here gases exchange takes place in the trachea okay so oxygen will be entering the trachea right and trachea will be getting the carbon dioxide from cells okay and then this carbon dioxide will be released to the environment via the spiracles released to environment via spiracles is that clear yes is that sir. clear okay so if we humans of nostrils what do the cockroaches have hmm? we have nostrils tracheal tube tracheal no. tube sir no we have nostrils uh, to uh, take in air I mean, and uh, release air uh, spiracles Spiracles, isn't it, Sandhu? Yes. Okay. So air enters the body by the spiracle, and it also leaves the body by the same spiracle. Okay. And you see, a cockroach is having a very light weight body. The weight of the cockroach is very light. Why? Because the body is filled with air. There are air bags inside the body. Right now. Okay, if you, someone were to like, um, uh, you see, cockroach can like fly from one place to an, another also, you know. Apart from crawling on the ground, fly. they can fly also. Yes. They cannot fly. They can jump high. They can actually jump, and they can actually like not stay up in the air for long time, but they can like jump and fly from one place to another. Okay, why? Because the body weight is very lighter. They have got wings also. Okay, it's not like the okay. other birds. Not like the birds, but they can fly from one you know, uh, one spot to another. So that is all about the cockroach, okay. right now. Hello. Yes. So most of the space in the cockroach, I mean, uh, air sacs uh, occupy more hmm. of the space in the cock. cockroach's body then what about the food sir what about, uh, what the, about food? the food that the cockroaches consumes look cockroach it does not mean that when i see that its body is having air sac it does not mean that it occupies a 100% space of the body no that's not the case air sacs are found in plenty in their body majority of their body portion is hollow it is filled up with the air sacs they still have got the necessary organ to store the food to do the process of digestion they also have got their own organs just like we humans have to carry out all the processes getting it now so okay. sacs also do the function of the stomach exactly they will also be having uh, like their own stomach their intestines and other uh, similar organs but will be of different types will be having different structures apart from the uh, other animals okay yeah? sir Okay. Yes, Shall sir. we move ahead then? Any confusions? <laughs> yes. No. Okay. Huh? Now the next animal waiting in line here is this. What? Earthworm. Worm. Farmer's friend. That is earthworm. Okay. Now, if you wait to see this animal, this animal does the process of breathing via its skin. Hmm? Sir, it does really have that. Yeah. We are thinking on between is this thing here. You know something. This this thing. Are you talking about this thing here? Yes. Okay. This is this. You must have observed in their body. Okay. <laughs> They have got a like uh, got a structure like this in their body. Okay, a particular portion of their body is more swollen. Okay, we will come to that, but let's start from Sir, the basics. I think it's when the earthworm moves, the body goes hmm. front and back, right? So that time it forms that kind of shape. 
when it moves forward or backward it can move in both direction forward yes, and backward yes so mm. yes sir. so when it moves it forms that uh, kind of thing which she is saying uh will you please repeat the last line which you just said i didn't got it uh like when the earthworm moves uh, front or back like mm-hmm. when it moves uh the thing will be formed like to push its body to the front or to the back yeah it is so formed it forms that thing right uh, it you are saying that it basically gives it uh, gives it grip and it is form while it's moving no that is actually not the reason okay even when you will see that it's resting it's not moving this structure will be there in the body okay okay sir. even when they are not moving this structure can be found in their body okay so uh, earthworm you see they have got a very soft and slimy body right and uh, their sir, the skin is very uh, wet yes sir it's just a snake and uh... like the earth form mm-hmm. like similar yeah they are similar in the yeah, manner in the manner they are similar in the manner like they use the uh, like base of their body for the uh, for the purpose of movement okay if you were to look at the snake here uh, let's say this is a snake a rattle snake let's say okay what happens now the one thing common in both of them is that at the base of their body at the uh, bottom of their belly bottom of their body basically they have got tissues that helps and that basically moves in back and forth direction back and forth direction basically the lower tissues of the um, lower tissues of the body basically pushes the ground backward same thing earthworm also does okay so earthworm you see they are we are talking about the breathing that takes how it takes place in the case of earthworms you see earthworm have got a very soft slimy and wet body a moist skin okay so the moist skin actually uh, makes them slippery right now so gases can pass in and pass out from their skin surface that's a special thing about the earthworm so many times now mischievously uh, many a kids what they do they will put in sand or they will put on uh, put some salts on their body and that actually kills them if someone pours some uh, amount of salt in their body okay what will happen this earthworm will start to develop irritation on their skin okay and it will start to eventually after a few minutes it will die the reason why it dies because when someone puts salt on its body it actually blocks the pour blocks the air pores in a skin so in that's why the earthworm now is not able to breathe getting it now so that actually proves that they have got air pores in their body right so they will be using the skin for the purpose of breathing and if you were to ask how the process of breathing takes place in the, them they also do the process of diffusion getting it yes sir okay. like uh, is it to do that if you get like a worm that earthworm in half then it will grow it will not no uh, no it's not true Re- they do not have regenerative cells okay as far as i know they do not have got regenerative cells but if you were to see the lizards whenever in fights or accidentally the tail of the lizard is uh, cut they can grow it back so they have got regenerative tissue in that portion of their body while well, uh, earthworm does not have okay so here you have an example of a um, animal that can breathe through a skin there's one more example of an animal that can breathe through breathe through their skin that is called which animal i'm talking about i am talking about frog frogs okay so while they are out in the air while they are not in the water frogs they are actually doing the process of breathing while they are why they are what the skin actually they are when they are inside the water 
not uh, in the air. Okay. So frogs also have got a very slippery and moist skin. Okay. And that helps them in the process of breathing. Is that clear? So frogs yes. can use their skin also. And apart from that, they can use their lungs also. So when will they be using their lungs and when will they be using their skin? Whenever they are under the water, they use their skin. And whenever they are out in the air, they will be using lungs. In it's so like the water <laughs> like outside, right? And then it is for mm -hmm. uh, like it's for like outside. I think inside, yeah. Inside. Uh, will you please repeat? Because, uh, uh, yes, Sundus, will you please repeat the question? I didn't hear it. How it's logical like, in the water that the skin, skin, like they breathe through the skin and in outside, they hmm. breathe through them. How? Whenever they are, uh, when they are uh, out in the open, they will be breathing via their lungs. Or just like how we humans breathe the, breathe uh, via our lungs. While whenever they are in the water, they will be using their skin. Okay, suppose now, uh, let's say this is a frog here. Okay, let's say this is a frog here. All right. So whenever they are inside the water, why the process of diffusion with, uh, with their skin, they are able to breathe the air. Breathe the air that is dissolved in the water. You know, in water, they oxygen is revolved. Yeah. They do diffusion. Yeah, exactly. So, why the help of diffusion? We, they will be taking in dissolved oxygen from the surrounding water, from the water body. Right now, that's how um, frogs breathe. Is that clear? <laughs> yes. The Can next. <laughs> yeah, sure. Look. When the frogs are underwater, then whenever they are underwater, why the help of diffusion, they will be taking in dissolved oxygen. Oxygen is dissolved in the water. Okay. Especially in the sea water or pond water, oxygen is dissolved there. So why the help of diffusion, they will be taking in, out, uh, taking in the oxygen. Why the, their skin with the help of diffusion. And when they are out in the open, they will be breathing with the help of their lungs. Is that yes, clear? Sir. Yes, sir. Good. Now, next in line, the animal waiting to be discussed is a underwater animal. That is a fish here. Okay. So, breathing underwater. Hmm. So, here we will be talking about both fishes and both plants also fishes and plants also okay you see animals that uh, breathe underwater they have got a special organ what do we call that organ yes For fishes it's gills yes. mm -hmm. exactly but for plants i'm not sure so mm. we uh, we're talking about animals first here so animals that breathe underwater they have a special organ called gills here. Okay. Now, this gills actually allows the exchange of gases. Okay. So, what happens if you were to look at this diagram here, uh, on the side of their faces, on both sides of their faces, they have got gills. And gills are actually rich in blood capillaries hence they look red have you seen the gills of the fish hmm? it is actually yes, so then uh, so mm -hmm. then like the seahorse does not have gills seahorses also have gills how okay uh i don't have the diagram here but uh, they also have got gills okay there are certain exceptions also in the underwater. 
that that uses a different organ also but majority of the um, um, organisms uh, that live under the water they have got gills apart from uh, uh, amphibians okay the amphibians won't be having the gills there's no amphibian that has got a gill amphibian you know animal that can live under water and on the land also yeah so here you can see the gills they are what they are comb like the structures yeah comb line structures okay that are rich in blood capillaries now you see whenever they are moving ahead whenever a fish move ahead what happens water can enter the gills water enters from one side of the gill okay and from the other side from here look here from if you are able to see here look here from here the water will be entering and from the other side of the gills water will be exiting the gills right now so the surface of the gills they are having lots of blood capillaries they are rich in blood capillaries and blood capillaries it means bloods are flowing in them okay just like you have got nerve vein similarly you have got blood capillaries also so as water moves across the blood capillaries the blood capillaries will be absorbing the will be taking the dissolved oxygen in the water right now and so what the dolphins have gills the dolphins dolphins don't have got uh, gills i got they have got uh, Mm, like in their body, they have got a hole just above their head. If I'm not wrong, yeah. Just like um, a whale, they also do not have got will, um, gills. Just above their head, you will be seeing that they have got a hole. Hmm? They, so they and, are amphibians. They are not amphibians. No, they are not amphibians. The whales, you will see that normally they will. Um, swim close sir, to the surface dolphins they use lungs dolphin has they lungs. use lungs they have got lungs no? and they yeah. actually come to the surface yes. to take in oxygen okay yeah you are right yes. dolphins actually have got lungs and they actually come to the surface to take in oxygen and then they um, they also um, um, swim close to the surface okay they are not they are not deep yeah. swimmers so thank you Yes. So they they are types of amphibian. Ah, uh, please repeat the question. So they are like a type of amphibian. No, no, they can't be considered as a type of amphibians. Look, because amphibian basically means. Are you talking about dolphins? Yes. Yeah, dolphins are a type of amphibians because they can survive uh, so uh, outside the water are also. Dolphins, right? Ah, uh, dolphins are mammals. Yes, sir. Okay, uh, dolphins or mammals? I'm not entirely sure about that because the definition of mammals is that the animals that are four-legged, four-legged animals that walk on Earth are called as mammals. Okay, but uh, there are some other criteria also for mammals. Okay, for example, you see blue whale. For example, blue whale, that is a mammal or not? Yes, sir. It that is, is not. How is a mammal because it does not have four legs? I said no. There are other criteria also for animals to be uh, to uh, to be a mammal, apart from having four legs. For example, it should be having a lung. Okay. It should so be. So cat laying... is a mammal. Cat is a mammal exactly. It should be laying young ones, not the eggs. Okay. For example, the chicken. Chicken cannot be called a mammal because it gives gives egg, not birth to live uh, live ones. So the animals that give birth to live ones, they are called as what mammals, right now. While if this, if you were to look at a normal fish, they do not give birth to live ones. They give their egg, right now, and the egg is fertilized by the male. Right now, male sperms. But if you were to look at the whales, whales do not lay eggs. Whales give birth to live uh, uh, to live ones. Right now, 
that's a blue whale is has been called as a mammal and talking about the amphi uh, talking about uh, amphibian amphibians are those organisms that can that are uh, like they can survive on terrestrial land also that can survive on land also and that can survive under water also is those turtle are called a mammal amphibians. turtle turtle is not a mammal because turtle lays egg okay once a year they will um swim to the um, coastal regions and there they will be burying their eggs okay if so turtle is not a mammal so but the turtles are amphibians right turtles are amphibians yeah <laughs> turtles are amphibians they can walk on earth and they can walk under or underwater also okay, okay. and dolphin is also amphibian now coming back to our discussion any more confusions <laughs> No, so dolphin is a mammal, right? Dolphin is a mammal. Where does the an electric eel have scales? Electric eels, electric eels. Uh, I guess they also have got scales. Okay, they also have got. Uh, then it does. It's not uh, like amphibian, right? Because it does not. Uh, Elec uh, like, electric uh, wheels. Electric wheels. Uh, electric uh, wheels. They cannot be called as um. You see, uh, they cannot be called as amphibian. Uh, sorry, mammals, because they do not um give birth to young ones. They also lay eggs. And talking about amphibians, they are able to survive under water only. As far as I know, they do not survive in the open in in the air. Getting it now. And. an electric wheel a full grown electric wheel can produce charge up to 50 watts it's enough to power a charge uh, power a car charge up a car okay okay now talking about the gills as i said water and uh, water ends the gill from one side and it exits the gill from the other side so when the water enters into the gills the blood rich capillaries inside the gill will absorb the water and when water is um exiting from the other side what happens it will be having carbon dioxide that is released that is collected up from all the cells of the body and it reaches this gills and that is released back into the water water is uh, like getting inside the gill in the smaller mm -hmm. part and then mm -hmm. getting out by a bigger exactly you can understand it like that so here these are the let's say gills and sundu sanchakrika you guys see here that water is entering here and it is rich in oxygen here and from the other side what happens the fish brought all the uh, carbon dioxide generated in the body to this gills and on the other side when the water um, exits the gill it is now rich in carbon dioxide so here you are seeing that gill is the site of gaseous exchange in fishes and it is used for breathing is that clear <coughs> okay so gills allows the exchange of oxygen between this fish and the water so it is allowing the by the way in the case of uh, in the case of uh, cockroach which organ was acting as a exchange site i think can you repeat the question again sir tracheal sir i think uh, two maybe so can spirals also be counted no spirals cannot be counted because is the only function of a spiral is similar to the function of nostrils we uh, we humans have just to okay. take in air and exhale the air so gills in fishes are allowing the exchange of gases it is allowing the exchange of gases in fishes okay or uh, you can say it is allowing the exchange of gas between gills and water okay any confusions regarding this fish here <laughs> we still have no one more topic left in the chapter that i think won't be able we won't be able to cover in today's class that is now how respiration 
takes place in plant hmm? it the plant to the opposite so plants the plants of so, uh, in the human cell cause plants it does like the... take in carbon dioxide <laughs> and can release oxygen I no they know. take in carbon dioxide in the process of chakrika in which process they take carbon dioxide Plants and photosynthesis exactly, but here we are not talking about photosynthesis. We are talking about respiration. So the food that has been prepared by the plant in the process of photosynthesis, apart from storing it as different, uh, apart from storing it as fruits, vegetables, seeds, and in other parts of their body, they also need some energy. Now, so some. portion of the food produced in the process of photosynthesis will also undergo respiration and the plant will be getting energy so plant will also take in the oxygen okay they will also be taking in the oxygen to break down the food right now so they will also be releasing carbon dioxide now interestingly what happens in the case of plants the carbon dioxide that is released in the process of photosynthesis can be if it is an excess amount it will be released into the atmosphere if it is not in excess oxygen right which is released released out in out in photosynthesis yes oxygen is released okay i am talking about this carbon dioxide that is released in the process of respiration Okay, just like it was being released in the case of humans and other animals also, this okay, carbon sir. dioxide, if it is produced in abundant amount, it will be released into the atmosphere. Now, suppose uh, the um, the sunlight is not there. If it's a rainy season, okay. If it's a cloudy, uh, it, the weather is cloudy. So the carbon dioxide that has been generated here, okay, that can be used. Like uh, to do uh, in the process of photosynthesis, that can occur in a very uh, limited um, uh, limited way because the sunlight is not there, right? And the oxygen that was being produced in the process of photosynthesis mm -hmm. that can be used in the process of respiration. Getting it now. Anyways, okay. when we uh, conclude the chapter along with the exercises, we will cover them in detail. Okay. Okay.